What's up everybody? It's your boy Mood616 here and I'm finally back with a brand new DVD slash Blu-ray update for y'all. It has been, I think, four months since my last one. I really, really do apologize for having such a big length between updates because this thing is just massive now and I gotta start doing these more regularly <laughs> because uh, it's probably gonna be a very, very long video. But first things first, for all the people out there that either know or don't know, we now have t-shirts for the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror podcast. This is what they look like. Here's the design, and you know, kind of stand up a little bit there. Oh yeah, that's what they look like. So, if you are interested in getting a shirt, please email Jeremy at nesruler2222 at gmail.com. I'll leave the link down below. If you have any questions about sizes, shipping, or any other general type inquiries and stuff about the t-shirts, um, email him. He's, re he's really on top of everything and he'll get back to you, you know, right, right away. So, um, but yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't ask for anything better. The prints on these are fantastic. They're, they, they, so colorful it's really amazing material and everything i'm not just saying that because we got these things done i'm just amazed at how well they actually did turn out so um we've had lots of positive feedback from you know the 50 or 60 people that have already taken pictures of their shirts and stuff like that so um yeah if you want one i do highly recommend you jumping on top of this right now because we printed up you know just a limited amount because that's what we could afford and uh, they're going super, super fast. So again, email Jeremy. I'll drop the link down below. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get right into why we're here. Um, yeah, DVDs first. I'll start off with some DVDs. Uh, and then I'll show a few non-horror things. But actually, the non-horror stuff is actually kind of cool this month. Uh, first, thing, uh, first up here is Blood Lake from uh, EGFA. A film that I honestly thought that I would never see get an official release. It's pretty obscure. I've seen this movie a couple times in the past. It's a shot on video film, film from 1987. I won't lie, it's really bad, but it's super fun. If you're into shot on video films, this one might be up your uh, up your alley. But it's very cool to see this type of film getting an official release. Um, yeah, awesome stuff from yeah. All right, moving along here, the possession. Of Joel Delaney. Now, this is a film from 1972, and as you know, if you follow the podcast, we're doing a top 10 in 1972. We're actually recording this Sunday. It'll be my first show back after the two that I've missed. Um, but uh, yeah, this movie right here is actually quite shockingly good. Um, and I will say, it's you know, it's probably one of the first of its kind too. You know, the possession of insert a name. Uh, this is a film that you probably could not make in today's reality in society because there's some really shocking outrageous moments in this film that you just couldn't do anymore but it's a really good film the possession of joel delaney give it a shot um i hope this one makes its way to blu-ray sometime because it's uh, definitely needs a uh, needs some more love um the car road to revenge uh this is actually a sequel to the original car film and I have to say, I actually liked it. It was pretty fun. It was a lot better than I was anticipating it to be. It was just a lot of fun. Stupid-ass killer car film. Um, but, yeah, man. Yeah, the original, yeah, from the original 1977 film. But I recommend it, man. It was actually worth it. I'm a big fan of killer car, kind of road horror type thing and stuff. So that was that was a good one. Um, I Dare You, Truth or Dare, Part 5, directed by Tim Ritter. I love how it has a horror mafia uh, quote on here. I loved it. The best sequel of the, of the series. I haven't seen this one yet, so I, I can't actually vouch for that. Uh, I highly doubt it is. Um, I know the boys from Horror Mafia. I've recorded with a couple of the guys before. So, um, But uh, yeah, man, I can't wait to, to check this one out. The fifth entry in the Truth of Dare series, directed all by Tim Ritter. Uh, this is a film from last year, actually. So yeah, looking forward to that. Sorry. I usually have something to put my movies on but i don't this week um yes from black fawn distribution bloody bits uh short compilation volume two sorry for the glare in here it's actually really kind of bright everywhere uh bloody bits i haven't checked this out now my boy matt from unihorn movies actually watched this one he said it was it was pretty hit and miss but he said for the most part it was actually pretty damn fun 
I'm a big fan of these kind of short film compilations. Um, they're always fun to watch, especially with friends and shit like that, because you don't really need a lot of attention to put these things on. It's kind of like trailer compilations. You put them on in the background, and then you scream, oh, there's tits every five minutes. So, um, But yeah, so Black Fawn again, they really put out a lot of great stuff, Canadian company, so yeah. And yeah. All right, so moving along here with Don't Leave Home. Actually, Jeremy just sent me this over in my package with my shirts. Um, I told him I was looking for a copy of this. He found one at uh, Family Video for me for probably $1.50. I've seen this movie. I watched it last year, and I actually really enjoyed it. It's kind of a it's a major slow burn kind of psychological horror film. Uh, pretty good stuff, though, but be on the lookout for this. I have a video coming up that has something to do with don't. So that is in the making. Be sure to check that out. All right, so my buddy Dylan Godzilla, aka Godzilla, picked this one up for me out of the blue, and it's called Video Man. This is a Swedish film. Uh, it's like a psychological horror slash thriller slash drama type deal. It's basically about this dude right here, who is obviously very nostalgic for the '80s, specifically uh, VHS collecting, and. Um, and it's really cool, man. There's a lot of really great shots in this film of Italian posters and a lot of really cool VHS tapes and things like that. Um, but I don't really want to give too much away. But yeah, he's kind of an alcoholic and he kind of meets this other girl that's very nostalgic for 80s and she's an alcoholic and stuff. And it gets very psychological and has something to do with, you know, Fulci's zombie tape. And there's even a really great conversation in the film about Fulci versus Argento, which is fantastic, man. Um... But yeah, so Video Man, I highly recommend this. This is a great Swedish film. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, next up here is Fangs. I randomly came across this at my buddy's shop. Two bucks. I'm like, fuck, I gotta pick it up. Uh, it's one I've actually wanted to put in the collection, but um, just never saw it out in the wild. And yeah, Fangs, man. Killer bat film, which I did not own. Uh, now I was shocked that Art Exploitation actually sent me this over because I did not ask for it or anything. And that is Rondo. So expect a review for this soon. Uh, it, I believe it is a, it's dubbed as a highly stylized pulp noir revenge murder melodrama. So I think it's like, I think it's like a rape revenge type thing or something like that. I don't know, but it sounded really damn cool. So I got to check this out, man. Uh, Rondo. Yeah. looks pretty awesome. Love the cover art on that. And I finally got around to picking up these. Uh, I, I, I think these things got released last year. And of course, I'm a big documentary fan slash VHS type stuff. Uh, VHS Lives, um, a shockumentary. This thing is way longer than I thought, man. It's like 144 minutes. That's crazy. So a documentary on you know VHS and things like that. So looking forward to checking that one. And there's actually a part two, uh, VHS Lives Undead Format. Uh, again, this one's really long too. 100 runs about 150 minutes. So looking forward to checking these out. Just got to make some time, but yeah. Yeah. They look cool. They look cool. Uh, I got a few, uh, actually the rest of these DVDs are all unearthed films. Uh, Necro necrophile passion. I've heard mixed things about this movie. Uh, it's really fucking short. I didn't realize I was looking at this just before it was in, in 52 minutes. <laughs> Holy shit, that's a short film. Uh, I'm a big Unearthed Films fan, so I pretty much buy everything that they put out. But uh, this was one I was just missing from the collection. Got it for like five bucks, so yeah. Can't wait to give that one a shot. Finally found this one for a good price. Forgot about this one in, in general. Uh, I Yeah, I forgot that they'd even put this out, but that is uh, Lethal Force. I don't really know much about this one. Apparently it is like, it's kind of like a, an action with horror elements to it. So I'm assuming it's really gory and shit like that. So yeah. Uh, yeah, this one actually looks really cool. Uh, we got uh, the Fame de Mort trilogy. This one I've had in my cart for so damn long. The price went right down to like 10 bucks for it. I'm like, fuck it. I'm just gotta, gotta pick it up. So yeah, looking forward to checking this one. I believe it is shit, dude. I don't even know where this is from. I want to see... No, it's not Russian. I'm not sure who put this out. It's something like that. Maybe it is. I don't know. Okay, finally. I actually overpaid for this because I just... I, I was really wanting to check this out and it just never seems to go down in price. And that is... 
and that is uh, Dreaming Purple Neon. Love that cover art, man. Of course, directed by Todd Sheets. Gotta love it. Look at that cover art right there. Yeah. And finally, for the DVDs, I uh, picked up Sex Galaxy. I didn't really know much about this one. I don't think it's really a horror film. I think it's more of like a sci-fi kind of sex slave type thing. I don't know. <laughs> it looks ridiculous, but it was super cheap. So, But yeah, that is going to do it for the DVD section. A few non-horror things before we get into the massive stacks of uh, horror Blu-rays. Uh, yeah, just a few odds and ends here. I uh, picked up Shakes the Clown with Bob Goldwaite. Um, this movie is f fucking hilarious, man. It's basically about an alcoholic clown played by Bob Goldwaite. And it's it's pretty funny, man. This is a film that I'd never seen before. It came out in 1991. Uh, my homeboy, Zach, uh, recommended me this film. And I was amazed. I'd never even heard of this film or seen it. It, it just kind of shocked me. But, um, but yeah, Shakes the Clown. Really funny stuff, man. Really, really funny stuff. It's got so many recognizable faces in here. It's got an early, you know, performance from Adam Sandler. And pretty much everybody that you recognize the film is all in full clown makeup. Pretty much the whole film. So... Um, of course, Julie Brown's in it, too. Um, picked up The Hunted with uh, Christopher Lambert. I remember uh, liking this film back in the 90s and shit, so I grabbed it. I, I'm, I'm really hoping it's the one I'm thinking of. <laughs> so, But yeah, The Hunted from Shout Factory. I finally got around to picking up John Goodman in The Babe. Now, if you follow me and know me, I'm a huge baseball fan. Baseball's my favorite sport. Uh, when this movie first came out, I believe in 92... You know, I was playing pretty high-level ball at that time, too. And this movie meant the world to me, man. It was like the, you know, first Babe Ruth movie I remember actually watching. And I think John Goodman did a great job. The story is a little bit kind of sympathetic towards him a little bit. He was kind of more nasty person than, than they showcase in this. But it's also made for kids, too. So, um, But, yeah, it's a, it's a good film. John Goodman actually really does look like Babe Ruth. It's crazy. Uh, an upgrade here, which is uh, Problem Child. Featuring one of my all-time favorite actors in John Ritter. I love John Ritter. Um, it's just classic material. Problem child. Picked it up. So, And my kid loves that movie too. Uh, the 35th anniversary of Yore. Now, I've never seen this movie. I knew about this film. Never seen it before. Uh, directed by Anthony M. Dawson, which is Antonio Margaretti. Uh, so this is an Italian film. I can't wait to check this out. I've been meaning to pop it in. Just really haven't had the time. So been doing a lot of prep for shows and shit like that so but yeah there's your and I, I can't even believe i didn't have this in the collection uh from 1981 dragon slayer i've seen this movie a lot of times growing up um and i was I, I got i got thinking about it and i was i went to go pop it in one day with my kid and i was like shit dude i don't even have this so but yeah gotta show my kid that one that's a great movie um Christina Applegate in uh, Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. Always loved this movie, man. Even my kid likes this movie. We watched it together and he thought it was pretty cool. So, but yeah, Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. And this was actually kind of an interesting find. I found this at Value Village, still sealed for five bucks. And I never picked it up because the show got canceled after the season. And it really, really fucking pissed me off. Like, really highly pissed me off because it's one of my favorite shows. I absolutely love this show. I'm a huge Western fan. And that's uh, Deadwood Season 3. Just on DVD, but I had season one and two in these editions, so I was like, five bucks, man, I might as well grab it. Still to this day, I'm super bitter and butthurt that this never got an official fourth season. I know they just made a movie, which I heard might tie up some ends. I don't know, but I heard that it's kind of depressing too a little bit. So, But yeah, Deadwood, third season, such a shame. It's such an amazing show that just didn't get its due, man. So, But yeah, so that's going to do it for... The horror DVDs and non-horror stuff. Yeah, I mean, let's keep moving this along. I might as well just try to shoot this without even stopping. I'm shooting on my webcam. I never shoot like this, but... Yeah. All right. Let's move it along. Um, actually, before I move it along, I forgot I even had this stuff sitting here. I did actually pick up one pop this month. Or this last four months. This is the first one I bought in probably a year and a half. Because I said I wasn't going to buy anymore. I did, and I saw the Alfred Hitchcock one, and I was like, you know what? It's Hitchcock. I love Hitchcock, so I got to pick that up. So I picked up the Hitchcock one. And actually, I completely forgot about this, too. 
Um, I picked up, you know, the volume one of the Maniac comic, which I plan on getting the other ones too. Obviously, our logo is inspired from Maniac, as you guys can figure that out. Um, yeah, instead of a head, it's got a, a mood shot top can there. But yeah, no, this is really good. Really good comic, man. And to my amazement, it came with this awesome, just a box. The tape in here is just an empty tape, but VHS, look at that artwork. It's just like fantastic. It's like really good. Yeah, that looks amazing. Really good stuff. Kind of almost has like the media logo at the bottom, but it's not. But yeah, really good stuff right there. So kind of forgot about that. All right, so let's get into the Blu-rays. What are we in here? 15 minutes, that's actually really good. I thought it was gonna be a little bit longer than that. Okay, cool. All right, starting out here. Um, I don't even know what I'm, you know what, I'm gonna start out with these. I might as well just do these ones here. here. Just the standard kind of DVD, or Blu-rays. First up here, The Transfiguration, which made my top 10 a couple years ago. This is a fantastic film. I would basically describe this film as Martin in the Hood. It's kind of the same type of thing as Martin, if you've seen the movie Martin. Uh, kind of based in the inner city and stuff like that. Really good film, though, man. Like, great performances. Awesome ending. Um, this one packs a lot of punch, man. I think I think more people need to check this out, because it's uh, definitely worth your time. <coughs> Transfiguration. Uh, the, Suspiria, the Suspiria remake. Um... I'm falling asleep just saying that. <laughs> this movie is so fucking boring. I'm going to give it another shot. I didn't hate this movie by any means. I just thought that adding so much story into this dragged it out. And it runs two and a half hours, which is also a big, huge fault to it. The third act's a little laughable. There's some bad effects and stuff. But I don't know. I'm going to give this one an a shot once the the first experience completely exits my uh, medulla umlangata because I want to go in fresh again with this one but uh, I honestly don't understand the love for this right now um, especially if you love the first film and I mean I understand that people were wanting more substance over the style of the original film and you know I, I'm not like that I, I personally can ha handle the, the you know the style over substance and I like stories too, you know, but I think they just kind of overdid it in this one. They just overdid it with the story. It's kind of cool that you get to see how the development of Mother Suspirium and things like that, but just a little bit too much for me, man. You know, way too long. I think that one could have really benefited from a good edit. <laughs> it's got pacing issues, to say the least. Uh, the Shape of Water. Uh, this one I had no ambition to check out. Someone Patreon this for me, so I just decided to pick up the Blu-ray. It was 10 bucks. And to my amazement, it was awesome. This was a really good movie. Great effects, great story, awesome outcome. I, I thought this was a fantastic film. It's really amazing. Really amazing stuff, man. Highly, highly recommend that one. Uh, Howl. Now, I've heard some people say they didn't really care for the effects in this and stuff. I mean, there was practical with CG and things like that. But overall, I like the atmosphere. I thought the kills were pretty good. I like the setting of the film. It's a pretty cool uh, werewolf film. Um, I picked up, I think this does have a region one release, but I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah, it does. But I like this cover art a lot better. So I, I went with this one and it was dirt cheap, like four pounds or something. It was crazy. Um, also from black fawn distribution, we got the heretics. Uh, this is a film that came out last year. I wonder, I'm wondering if this is actually count. No, I think this Blu-ray came out in late 18. <laughs> I liked it. I, I really liked this, man. I thought this was actually a pretty decent film. I, I heard a little little buzz about it last year, and a few people mentioned it, but if you haven't checked out The Heretics, I mean, with a title like that, you kind of know what you're getting yourself into a little bit. A um, little cultish and shit like that. But The Heretics, good film. Good film. Uh, the Thing remake. This is an upgrade. We did the, the Thing trilogy a few months back, and um, I just decided to upgrade because I had the DVD. And... Uh, when I first watched the Thing remake, I wasn't really a big fan of it. You know, I, I thought that, you know, putting the CG over the practical effects really kind of ruined the film. It's just, you know, it is what it is. But upon rewatching it with a critical mind, you know, how it takes place right after the original one, I, I do like that aspect and stuff. And, 
it's actually not as bad as people make it out to be. It really isn't. So, I got a stupid fucking... Uh, screensaver keeps coming on. But yeah, the Thing remake, not bad. Not bad. And finally for... I mean, this one's kind of whorish, I guess. I was going to say, for not, that's it for the non horror stuff. But this one's kind of horror. I mean, it's got elements of it. But it's just a fantastic film. And that's Ninja Scroll. Honestly, man, one of my favorite animes. This thing is bloody. It's, you know, it's nasty. Animation's fantastic. The story's really fun. The characters, the dialogue. The, the, everything about this is just entertaining as hell, man. If you've never seen Ninja Scroll, I highly recommend checking this out. And actually finding this edition, too. Really nice slipcover. It's all embossed and shit. Yeah, this was uh, a Patreon pick, and as soon as I saw it picked for me, I was like, damn, dude, I gotta jump all over that. I hadn't seen Ninja Scroll since the 90s. Hadn't seen it since the 90s, couldn't really remember it too much, and to my amazement, uh, well, not to my amazement, but it was still, it's, it held up. Really awesome. One of my favorite animes ever, which, you know, I'm not too engulfed in the whole thing. I, I dabble here and there, but that one really, really stands out to me. Okay. So, let me just get that off screen there. Uh, Blu-rays. More Blu-rays. First up, Criterion and Night of Living Dead. We actually did the George A. Romero Dead series. I own this on a couple different Blu-rays. I even have the Umbrella one with, you know, the double-sided limited one that has the original and the remake. But I decided to grab this one because I actually found this for insane price. Like, I think it was price improper. Um, so I jumped all over that and I did notice that the price jumped right back up. So I think it might've been a glitch or something, which I'm, I'm so fortunate for that. Cause I'm so OCD with things. If I have things in my cart, I'll keep checking like every day. And sometimes I just get those prices, but night of living dead. What can I say? It's classic. I mean, the transfer is phenomenal. I can't tell if this transfer is any better than the one umbrella did, but the one umbrella or if they're even the same, I don't know if they're the same transfers, but I just remember that one looking fucking amazing. But it's Criterion. You just expect it to look good. Night of Living Dead. Good stuff. It actually does come with another cut. I believe... Yeah, it says Night of the Ambius. Um, never presented work print edit of the film. I, I don't know. I haven't even checked that. I heard it's just a couple different sequences and things. Uh, from Troma, we picked up the Grindsploitation Trilogy. Uh, I believe this is just... Um, like a bunch of trailers, uh, short films, um, things like that. Just It's kind of a hos, hodgepodge of, of shit. Sorry about the glare there, guys. This one's still, still sealed. I haven't gotten around to checking it out. But it's kind of cool, man. It's really fucking long, too. Like, this shit's running, like... N yeah, we're talking, like, nine hours of stuff on here. <laughs> so, you know, for 15 bucks, it's definitely worth it, I guess. Uh, the Twilight People from 1972. This was actually a, um, a prize from Jeremy. We do this box office brawl thing on the podcast. And whoever wins and loses, you know, you buy, blah, blah, blah. So anyways, I needed to pick something and I needed to see this film. So Twilight People. So I got Jeremy to pick it up. Because this one, for some odd reason, these VCI Blu-rays in Canada sell for ridiculous amounts. Like, they have no business being like $30. They're charging more than screen factories and arrows and shit. It's kind of funny. But uh, yeah, The Twilight People, it's pretty bad. It's pretty shitty, actually, to be honest. But, uh, you know, I'm glad I didn't have to pay for it. Thank you, Jeremy, for the our Twilight People. Um, I love the cover art on this. Um, it's really bad. It's kind of entertaining, but it's pretty shitty. If that makes any fucking sense. All right, so getting into some unearthed Blu-rays. First, we got this. Starring uh, Bill Orbster Jr., which I love as an actor, man. That guy is fantastic. He's such a fantastic actor. This is a weird, fucking strange ass film. I'm pretty sure I got what it was about the first time around. And it's funny, I actually just watched two updates recently who showed this movie off, and the, both people said they had no idea what was going on in this movie, <laughs> which kind of makes me laugh. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I highly recommend checking this out, though. It's pretty good. It's from Unearthed, so, you, you know, it, sometimes hit and miss, but it's interesting. Also from Unearthed Films, you got Purgatory Road, which I really enjoyed. Um, basically about this traveling pastor and his brother who are kind of doing malicious things, like 
Yeah, they're they're like a traveling cult, basically traveling religion. You know, they travel around in their RV and shit like that, and they do all this nasty shit and stuff. And the brother is not really on board with the killer priest, and I just said killer priest. Um, yeah, it, it was good though. I, I liked it, man. I thought it was pretty interesting. This was one of the oddest releases from Unearth, I think I've ever that I own. Like, and I own the majority of their releases, and this one kind of shocked me. I didn't know what it was about. The Blu-ray was cheaper than the DVD, so I obviously went the Blu-ray, but The Scarlet Worm, uh, this is a Western, actually pretty cool story. I really enjoyed this whole film. I thought the performances were pretty good for being an independent Western. Um, you know, like I said, the storyline was pretty interesting. It has some good gore. It's, it's got some grittiness and nastiness to it. The only thing I didn't like about this movie is the look of it, because I've always had a problem with Western shot digitally. It seems too clear and seems too odd to me. I like... I like westerns that are shot on film. I mean, hence most great westerns are from back in the day, obviously shot on film. That's the biggest downfall for it. I think this movie would have been a more amazing if it had been shot on film and had that grain to it. Had that. It's just it's too clean looking. It just digitalizing westerns is awkward to me. It feels awkward, you know. And I kept noticing. Usually. You can kind of get past it in the first 15, 20, half of that, you know, 30 minutes of a film. I couldn't get past in this one. And it's a 93 minute film. So, but otherwise, though, good film. Good film. I mean, that's just my gripe on You guys might not even notice, but uh, next up here is Brutal. This is actually one I haven't watched yet. Uh, I've been hearing really good things about this, though. So, can't wait to check it out. It's short, 67 minutes, uh, Japanese film, I believe. And about, I think, Two murders that kind of come together and do their thing and stuff like that. It's kind of like a psychos and love story, I guess. Now when I think about it. So, yeah, brutal. Uh, Japanese slash Korean mashup film, I think. Um, a record of sweet murder. This was really good. This was really damn good. Uh, the acting and... Man, I don't know if they just managed to pull this off in front of my eyes, but this movie, I don't know if the if it was marketed with this gimmick, but this movie is like supposed to be shot all in like one take. I don't know if they have some really amazing trickery with the editing and stuff, but if it appears to be like that, it probably isn't. There probably is some trickery there, but man, it's just shot so amazing. Like the way it's done is incredible. The performances, the story is really interesting. And the ending's fantastic. It's got one of those endings where you go, fuck, what the hell? Really good shit, man. Record of Sweet Murder. Highly recommend this movie. It's awesome. Really, really good stuff. All right. Moving along to some Code Red and Scorpion releases. Uh, I picked this up from a man, Turi, uh, the man with two heads. He was selling it. I didn't have a copy. Um, I'm a big fan of Annie Milligan films because they're just, he's such a terrible director. Like, these are the type of movies you have to see to believe. They're just so bad. Um, another one from uh, 1972. I think this came... Yeah, I watched it for 72. 72. Man with Two Heads. It's it's Andy Milligan. You know what you're getting with it. It's going to be low budget, shitty editing, shitty... Everything shitty about it. Actually, that was exceptionally bad. Um, now, I grabbed this one. I didn't know anything about this, but... I heard the owl call my name. Now, I think it's more of a drama... You usually don't see Scorpion release films like this. I picked this up because it was it actually takes place where I live. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and that's really all I know about it. I know it deals with the natives and things like that. And uh, But kind of cool. It's actually a mashup release between Scorpion and, and, and uh, Shout Factory, which I thought was interesting too. You don't see a lot of that either. But So that's kind of cool. I'm going to check that one out. Uh, finally picked up Lisa. Um... I think I picked this up. Yeah, I got this one from Turi also, actually. He was selling this one. Another uh, Scorpion release. Well, distributed through Kino. But, uh, yeah, I heard this one's actually pretty interesting. So, there's Lisa. Nico Masarakis film, Blind Date. Really enjoyed this one. It was fun. Nico, I love Nico Masarakis' films, man. The, the guy does so many interesting films and different types of shit. Um, yeah, he's the Greek. he's the Greek master, this one. Uh, Blind Date, this has Kirstie Alley in it, which is pretty interesting. It's it's cool because it's got an interesting 
kind of futuristic premise to it about this guy having these implants and shit like that in his eyes and because he goes blind. It's it's pretty cool. I won't give anything away, but it's a pretty interesting film. Blind Date. Um, yeah. Well, these aren't horror, but these are part of, you know, these niche companies, these boutique companies. Uh, from 88 Films, we got The Vengeful Beauty, which is number 23. I was just missing this one. From Shaw Brothers, the Shaw Brothers line. Uh, yeah, they've really slowed down on this line. I, they, I think this is number 20. Yeah, so this is the last one that they've released. And this came out like months ago. So I don't know if they're going to continue with the Shaw Brothers line or what. Kind of disappointing if they aren't going to release anything else. Because it's been a long break. Like, it's been probably six, eight months since they since these last two came out. But I love the Shaw Brothers line. It's one of my favorites. It's amazing. And, of course, we got the Human Goddess here with the slip, which will be coming off. Um... Yeah, I actually have, like, a, all these, re these are, like, all part of this Italian line and Shaw Brothers. I've taken them all off because I'm missing some, so I'm just, like, I think it looks better without them all on there. But, yeah, the Human Goddess. Cool stuff, man. Cool stuff. That's number 22, and that's the entire line. Uh, Vestrons, which I had my homeboy Jeremy pick up for me probably, like, eight months ago. And he finally got around to sending them over to me. <laughs> yeah, it's not like back in the day when he used to jump on that shit and send them to me and stuff. But I'm just as bad. I, I got to send him some stuff too. But uh, we got Maximum Overdrive, which I actually did watch his Blu-ray. It looks good. It looks good. I'm one, of, I'm one of the people that loves this movie. I don't know. I've seen this film so many times as a kid growing up, man. It was the ACDC soundtrack used to pull me in. I'm a big fan of Emilio Estevez. I'm a big Stephen King fan. So everything kind of came together for me i know it's not a fantastic film or anything and a lot of shit doesn't really make sense it's got some serious plot holes but who cares man you know it's you know it's electronics and and man-made shit coming to life and killing people it doesn't need to make sense i love maximum overdrive man great film i uh, have not watched this yet i've seen this movie before and that's uh dagon i believe i have the full moon dvd somewhere of this um yeah I remember not really caring for this film a whole lot, so I need to definitely rewatch this. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see what it looks like on Blu-ray because I know it's got a lot of like kind of fantasy colors and things like that that are going on. So Dagon, and finally for the vest runs, we got Beyond Reanimator, which I did rewatch, and to my amazement, it's so much better than I remembered it being. It's 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 so it's just a fun ass movie. It's got really good gore. Um, Jeffrey Combs, one of my favorite actors favorite horror actors of all time you know when i met him i told him that and he was you know and he told me some great stories actually when, when i met him but i digress uh yeah this one gets shit on a lot because it was like a tv film and shit i believe it was made for tv but it's good it's really really fun and actually speaking of companies that aren't releasing anything that's the rest of the vestrons they got up to maximum overdrive and haven't announced anything in months so i don't know what's up with this label to be honest, man, they're super overrated. They're way too expensive for what they are. Um, I mean, they're charging like $30, $35 up here for these things. And transfers aren't the great. The transfers are hit and miss and stuff. But, you know, I, won't, I wouldn't be crying if they just kind of... Because my OCD gets the best of me. Once things are numbered, I, I get fucked. It's like any collector, right? Uh, getting into the Kino stuff, man. Another Redemption, number 55. So the collection is complete again. I know there's another one that... Uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. what the fuck is it called the devil's kiss i have the dvd of it too that's supposed to be coming out i don't know i can't find the pre-order anyways but uh, another gene roland film dracula's fiance i have not checked this one out yet it also comes with lost in new york which is really cool it's double feature i'll be honest i haven't seen any later gene roland films i'm a huge massive gene roland fan i've seen all of his early movies but these later ones uh from 94 2002 and 1989 like these are later later films because his early stuff is like late 60s early 70s looking forward to checking that out actually this was a cool release from kino man part of the classics line uh the house that would not die a tv film from 1970 1970 cool film man i really enjoy this i really wish more of these tv films from the 70s would get the love that they deserve because awesome Great, great release, and I haven't seen anyone show this off yet. House of Would Not Die. If you're if you're a fan 
of great TV films from the 70s into the early 80s. Yeah, you might want to check this one out. It's good shit, man. Awesome. Um, actually, another shout-out goes to my man, Zach, for um, telling me about this. I didn't even know that Kino was releasing this. And he's like, yo, man, you got to check this out. It's a TV horror film. And you know that I'm a big fan of TV films from the 70s. It did not disappoint. Thank you, Zach, for that. That was awesome. Uh, picked up Link. This is an upgrade for myself from 1986. Great film, man. <laughs> this movie actually legitimately has some parts in it that just fucking make me ball laughing, man. I don't know what it is about this movie, but there's some shit in there that just kills me, man. Uh, it's got the beautiful Elizabeth Shue in there. Link. Great film. Really, really great film. Uh, this one I've never seen before. <clears throat> Can't wait to check it out. 1957, black and white, very short, and that's a land unknown. I, anything to do with dinosaurs, man, I, I'm jumping all over. I love dinosaur-related films, especially from this time period because, you know, it's like stop motion or other really bad effects. I mean, a lot of stop motion is actually pretty good, but the land unknown, yeah, I can't wait to can't wait to dig into that one, man. Any, like I said, dinosaur shit sucks me in. Uh, also on the Kino Classics line, finally, this one came out. I don't know why they released them the way they did. But uh, for a few dollars more, Sergio Leone, of course, is the middle film in um, the Amazing Man with No Name trilogy. I bought these films so many times, it's ridiculous. Like, I have multiple DVDs. I have the old Blu-rays. This is insane how many times I bought these fucking movies. And they're probably coming to 4K. I think these are 4K transfers. I'm sure they're going to come to 4K discs, which I don't collect. But um, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Transfers are just phenomenal on those. Uh, Scream and Scream Again. Uh, Vincent Price film from 1970. This is good, man. I actually really enjoyed this, man. And that cover art is fantastic that Kino used. Look at that shit. I know this was a released by Twilight Times. And I'm glad I never grabbed that because I never wanted to support Twilight Times because they were always a pain in the ass with their limited shit. But, uh, but yeah, here we go with Kino. And last up for the Kinos, man, I just got this in the mail yesterday and actually popped this in when I got home last night after watching Godzilla, which I will say I really, really highly enjoyed the new Godzilla film. I thought it was fantastic. I went with my homeboy Godzilla and we both really enjoyed it. He probably liked it more than I did. I came in pretty high on, you know, my rating for it and stuff, but uh, good film, good film. You know, it was, it, it, it was kind of what I was expecting, you know, it's maybe a little bit too long, but, uh, Porky's 2 and Porky's 3. I love the Porky's films. I'm a big fan of sex comedies. I actually was watching, yeah, like I said, well, I popped in Porky's 2. Uh, more or less just to check out what the transfer is like, because I've heard from some people saying that the transfer on this was not great. Porky's 2 looks great on Blu-ray. It looks what it is. I haven't checked out the third one. Um, I did look up the ratings. This, this one did actually get the lesser of the ratings for the Blu-ray release, but yeah. Porky's 2 and Porky's 3. I... Have these on, I mean, they can't, the transfers can't be any worse than the DVDs, so. Because they're old, man. I bought that trilogy, oh shit, dude, like probably in the early 2000s when it came out. So that's good, man. Porky's 2 is fun as hell, man. I love Pee Wee in that film. It's great. Okay, moving along, then, into some Severance. This has to be the most Severance I think I've ever bought in one update. Um, I didn't even hit up their sale. Because everything I wanted wasn't on sale. It's ridiculous. It was pretty much all the new releases. I got to get some of the back catalog and stuff. Severance are getting harder and harder to get. They're not putting their stuff on Amazon anymore. And for us Canadians, a pain in the ass because when you buy from the U.S., you got to pay shipping, conversion, and everything just costs so much money. I digress. Next to Kin, a film that definitely, finally got its props. It took forever to finally get an official release of this um, kind of skip Blu-ray or skip DVD when to read to Blu-ray. It's an awesome film from 1982. Like, legitimately good film. Um, so happy this finally came out. It actually says 1989 on the back. That's a typo. This is from 1982. Don't let these motherfuckers over at Severn fool your ass. Um, no, Next Kin's a good film, man. It's um, highly recommend The Transfer. Whew. Good shit. Good stuff from Severn. Really enjoy that one. Actually, one of Quentin Tarantino's favorite films. But then again... Doesn't Tarantino have a favorite, like multiple favorite films from every year? Uh, Invasion of the Bl Invasion of the Blood Farmers. Oh my god, I can't even believe the transfer on this because I I have other copies of this and it always looks so bad. I mean, it's 
it's a very very low budget film from 72 shot acted it's it's terrible in itself but man severin really kind of brought this one back from the dead and gave it justice man it's really good i, I had a blast with this man watching this again and um it's stupid but can't really go wrong with it fuck i gotta turn that shit off that's annoying uh skinner upgrade from my vhs tape yeah skinner with amazing cast ted ramey ricky lake and tracy lords awesome <laughs> oh man i love this movie skinner is so much fun it, it's so much better than i remembered it to be and this transfer is ridiculous ridiculous oh man good job by severin all right so i picked up the all colors of the dark box set um which I got to say, man, Severin really does do their box sets are so shitty. Like this thing's already coming. It, it arrived coming like that. The side was like all tattered up. Like it's all tattered right there. If you can see that and shit, I'm just like the fuck man. Like definitely don't have those awesome kind of, you know, indicator box sets and, you know, arrow and shit. But yeah, um, all the colors of the dark Blu-ray, which actually is kind of like an upgrade for my other Blu-ray. I, I do have the shameless one, but that Blu-ray doesn't look very good. This looks a lot better. It does the movie a lot better. It sounds better too, actually. Uh, and I love this one. 1972, a fantastic Giallo starring George Hilton, Edward Fennec, and Susan Scott, which Fennec, my opinion, is one of the most beautiful women to ever grace this planet. Everything, every time I see her, it just, it makes me... It makes me do things. Um, and then we got uh, all the colors of the Giallo. Triple disc. I will say this documentary is... It's decent for what it is. If you are just getting into Giallos and you're looking for recommendations, you want to know more about things, this is kind of a great starter package because it goes through all the, the bigger directors and it kind of it talks about their bigger films and stuff and kind of does them justice a little bit. But for People that are kind of well-versed in giallos and are looking for more obscure things and want to learn things, not really the ideal documentary. I didn't learn anything watching this. I knew pretty much all the information that was given. Um, but with that said, it was still entertaining for what it is. And I would recommend it, to, like I said, to someone that's wanting to get into the giallos and, and doesn't really know what to look for. This will give you a general idea of you know, where to turn yourself to. So, uh, yeah. And that's what I got to say about that. You know, it's... And, and, you know, actually, one thing about this, from what I remember, is I wish they had more people talking about the films, too. There's only a few people that really kind of give you all the insights and all the information and stuff. Oh, my back is killing me. Um, yeah, so, otherwise, really cool release. Just, I wish the box is better quality. I don't know, Severin, you got to start doing some better boxes on those, man. That's pretty shoddy. Speaking of shit boxes, the Hemisphere of Horrors, Hemisphere Horrors box set, um... Yeah, dude. Like, that is super, super flimsy. I, that's kind of annoying. Uh, Curse of the Vampires, which I don't think I've seen any of these. I haven't even dug into this box set yet. Curse of the Vampires. Uh, the Blood Drinkers. <laughs> which, I don't know what it is about that cover. The look on this dude right there. Uh, where, am I? where am I? Right there. Oh, my God. Look at that shit. <laughs> this looks fucking funny to me, man. Uh, from 1964. So that's probably really bad. Uh, oh, no, I've seen this movie. Brain of Blood. I have the DVD of this. Brain of Blood. Um, I think it's like an alpha DVD or something like that. Uh, pretty shitty, actually, uh, from 1971. And The Black Cat, also with The Torture Chamber of Dr. Sadism. That's a great title. The Black Cat. Uh, just a Poe uh, version of it. Yeah, must be. But yeah, you know, cool box set. Um, I missed out on the last one. I, well, I didn't miss out. I actually ordered it, and I never got one. They were sold out, apparently. And my order went through and everything, so... That fucking pisses me off, man. Because I, I box sets, man, are like my kryptonite, man. I always have to buy box sets when they come out. I love them. So, oh, wow. Just about lost it. Just about lost it right there. Oh, Hemisphere of Horrors almost took out the stack. That's it for the severance. On to the ridiculous stack of vinegar syndromes. First up, man, we got Wacko from 1982, which is actually really funny. I This is probably the funniest one out of all the uh, kind of the parody films from 1982. There's uh, 
class reunion and pandemonium pandemonium is actually really funny i wish that movie had it kept its original title of thursday thursday the 12th it was originally called that's a great title <laughs> right that's fucking hilarious wacko's funny as hell though there's some good parts in that yeah yeah wacko uh then we got the dark room um this one 1989 i did watch this and for some reason, I'm forgetting everything about it. So, holy shit, dude. I, wow, I did watch this. It's in my letterbox rated. I can't remember it. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this was actually pretty good. This was pretty decent. Um, kind of a, like a mystery, kind of giallo. Like it, this, this is pretty much like a, it's like an Americanized giallo, basically, is what it is. Um, some people might call it a slasher, but it's it's more of a giallo. But yeah, Dark, it was actually not that bad. It wasn't that bad. It's not very gory or anything, but... Uh, grandmother's House, this was a fun little piece of shit. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I just said that, but... Uh, I'd never seen this movie before. So that was cool. Another 1988 film that uh, got a really amazing release that probably shouldn't have got, but... Uh, grandmother's House, cool shit, man. I guess I could probably just show all the cover arts that are underneath your gram. Look at that fucking cover. It's awesome. I don't know. It's a little bit misleading, the title. I don't know. Uh, the Corruption of Chris Miller. A giallo I have not seen before. I heard this one's kind of average, but, you know, I'm still really looking forward to checking it out. Cover right there. It's pretty cool, man. Uh, one, I, yeah, 1973. I don't know. Got to check it out. Uh, Dominique. Uh, this is a upgrade from my VHS. VHS, Dominique, I have did watch this. I did watch this again. Dominique is dead, or is she? I always liked this movie, man. You know, I mean, th this type of storyline has been done lots. We've seen a lot of films come after this that have done this before. So going back and watching, like, eh, it doesn't seem that fresh. But it may have been in 73. I don't know. Um, but it's, it's kind of cool, man. It's kind of cool. I like it. I mean, I don't have to say that all these have great transfers, because they really do. Um, I actually haven't checked the transfer out on this, but uh, Splatter University. Apparently, someone told me it's the same as the 88 Films one, which I actually have that Blu-ray too, but I wanted this because they changed the audio on it, and the audio on the other one sucks. So, but yeah, Splatter University. I'm a big fan of this terrible slasher film. It's so bad, but it's just, I don't know. I always, I've had this connection with this film forever. Um, that's why I, I had to buy a Splatter University shirt, because I absolutely... <laughs> have this weird relationship with it. I don't even care for the film that much, but I love it. It's weird. But great slipcover, man. All glossy and boss and shit. Good stuff. Uh, the In the Cold of the Night. This is a Nico Masarakis film. Um, This one right here, I was a little bit disappointed with. I think this is probably like my least favorite Nico Masarakis film. I don't know, man. It, it was kind of slow paced. It wasn't really that interesting and stuff, but from 1990, not really one I'd recommend, which is kind of unfortunate because, like I said, Nico Masarakis is pretty awesome. Uh, Party Line, one I had not seen before, and I did watch it. It's kind of, it feels like softcore to me. I don't know. It, it's kind of, it's okay. Um, have to do with, you know, of course, calling on the phone and killing and shit. Yeah, so, it's all right. The, I've been wanting to, to, to dip into this, but Battle for the Lost, Battle for the Lost Planet, Battle for the Lost Planet, and then we got Mutant War, double feature, um, from Brett Piper, holy shit, I was forgetting his name for a second, how the hell did I forget Brett Piper's name, I love Brett Piper, but yeah, two early sci-fi type films from Brett Piper, so looking forward to checking those out, I love how they did that though, how you can just, you know, fully double-sided slip covers, that's really cool. Okay, I'm not liking where this is going right now. I feel like that's going to fucking bomb. And another kind of... I have the 88 Blu-ray of this too, but it was part of the package deal, and I was like, fuck it, I'll just grab it, which is a suckling. <laughs> I like the suckling. It's a terrible movie, but it's fun. And that, that cover right there is so gross. It's so bad. Um, but yeah, I haven't checked out the transfer on it, but yeah, suckling. Good shit. Uh, let's get into the arrows I picked up. <clears throat> wow, I'm actually not doing too bad for time right now. I mean, it's pretty long, and I haven't even stopped at all during this. I usually stop all the time when I'm doing, like, every section I'll stop, but I just feel like getting this done. Hmm. 
Let me get some coffee out of my Wu-Tang cup. Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. Um, yeah, so first up here from Arrow, uh, the iguana with the tongue of fire. Is that, am I saying that right? With the tongue of fire. Jesus Christ, I double-guessed myself. Love that cover right there, man. I still need to check it, this film out. I've never seen this giallo, believe it or not. I've never seen this giallo. Uh, I've heard really good things. I don't know why. Um, I mean, obviously, it's been, you know, available on bootlegs and things like that. And giallos are films I don't really like to watch on a lot of bootlegs because I like to have the best version out to watch them because they're stylistic films. You need to see it in the best possible quality. I'm kind of weird like that, but looking forward to checking that out. Yeah, um, Van Beber's uh, Deadbeat at Dawn. Oh, fuck, I'm so happy that, like, Arrow <laughs> released this film because this was falling into obscurity. I know, was it Dark? No, it was Synapse, actually. Was it Synapse? Yeah, Synapse had released it, had a huge falling out with Van Beber. It got pulled, so it was out of print. It was very hard to find. A lot of shoddy bootlegs out there, this movie. But it's fun, man. It's just ridiculous. Like, I think Van Beber's a great director, man. Very ambitious, uh, a lot of gore and stuff. It's gritty. It's kind of like this gangster fucking inner city type deal that's going on here. I always like this movie, man. Debbie to Dawn. If you've never seen it, check it out, man. It's a really good show. Uh, John Landis' Schlock. I'd never seen this before until I picked this up. Very early kind of comedy about this killer gorilla. <laughs> it's so stupid. It, it's, it's like a fucking, it's just like a parody, man. You know, um kind of spoofing, you know, films from the previous... When did this movie come out, man? 1973? Yeah. Schlock. It's it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. It, 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 there was definitely some parts in the film that made me laugh. Uh, the Forbidden Photos of a Lady Above Suspicion. This is an awesome, awesome giallo. I do have the Blue Underground DVD of this. I love this movie. Still got, haven't gotten around to checking out the Blu-ray yet. I haven't even opened it yet, which I should have... But I don't mind that commissioned artwork. It's actually not bad. It's not bad. This is a good one, though, man. Really, really good stuff. Uh, another one I haven't opened, but I do have the DVD. And I love this movie. Texas Adios, uh, Franco Nero. Great spaghetti western. You can't go wrong with it. Uh, yeah, from Baldi. Fern um, Ferdinand Fernando. Fuck, I can't say his name right now. Uh, Baldi did this film. It's awesome. Really, really good stuff. Can't really go wrong with a Franco Nero film, man. Finally got around to picking this up because, again, it sat in my cart for way too long and the price dropped dramatically. Finally upgrade. You know, it's funny. I never owned... In fact, I don't own any... This is the very first Children of the Corn film that I own on Blu-ray. I don't have any of the other films on Blu-ray. I have them all on DVD. But I never grabbed that trilogy from 88 film. I don't know. I just... After doing the whole franchise on the podcast, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good with the DVDs, man. I'm pretty good. It's not really the most solid franchise in the world, but kind of an understatement, I would say. But Children of the Corn is great. I, I did rewatch this Blu-ray. Or rewatch this. And it's good, man. It's good. It even comes with the it comes with the short film. Yeah, Disciples of the Crow, the 1983 short adaptation of Stephen King's story. So the, the original short film that this movie is based off of, so that was a really cool feature. It's actually worth it just for that. Pretty pretty neat stuff. So, uh, But I recommend it, though, man. It's probably the best Children of the Corn's ever going to look. So, yeah, it's good shit. Got this on the sale. I was very, very happy because I thought this was out of print. Someone told me this was out of print. I don't know if they repress this or what, but um, got the Endless double feature, uh, which also comes with um, the first film. Why am I forgetting what it's called now? Holy shit, what's the first film called? Resolution. Resolution. Yeah, so that was really cool to get, man. Um, sorry about the glare, guys. That's just fucking nasty. I'm such a dick. But yeah, Endless with Resolution. So I, I finally I'm going to get to you know sit down and watch both these movies. So watch them in sequence. I heard that you can watch The Endless by itself, but if you watch Resolution before, you pick up more things than The Endless, which OCD kicks in, and I have to do it like that. So... Uh, I was very, very happy to get this for crazy... I think this was like 15 pounds on the sale or something. But the uh, the Outlaw Gangster VIP box set, I've been wanting to get this forever. And I mean, this was like... That's a good deal, 15 pounds for this? Because originally it was selling for, you know, I think it was like 40 pounds or something. So 
but yeah, very cool, man. So it's got all the uh, six films. One, two, three. Yeah, it's got six films in it. Yeah, yeah, love those. You know me and my box sets, man. We got the uh, the Jose Lawrence box sets, the Blood Hunger. Yeah, yeah, good shit from Arrow. This is kind of a still to this day. I still can't even believe that Arrow decided to release this. It obviously wasn't overly popular because it's still in print. So, but it comes with a movie called Violation of the Bitch. How could you not pick up this box set? But then again, they'll probably release these all solo on solo releases, anyways. But Violation of the Bitch, fucking amazing. Uh, we all know vampires. I've reviewed this film probably a couple times in the past. I, I like vampires, man. It's good shit. It's le lesbian vampires. Great atmosphere. It's good stuff, man. Vampires is a good, great film. And another one I have not seen, which is Whirlpool. I don't think this is even a horror film. I think it's more of like a drama fucking... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Let me know if you guys know. But I, I still need to check out the other films in this box set, but... Nevertheless, still very, very cool. It comes with a booklet, too. Um, just an amazing-looking box set, man. Like They do such a good job. And see, Severin? See how hard that is? It's going to protect your shit inside. Stop fucking around with these weak-ass boxes. Anyways. Anyways, and this was cool. Because this one is always selling for, in Canada, I think that it was between 100 and 120 forever. Had it in my cart, just looking... Every fucking day. And actually, I hadn't checked in a while. Went and checked it out. Yeah. Got it for 39 bucks Canadian. So that's like $2 American. Um, the Battles... Uh, Jesus Christ. New Battles Without Honor and Humanity. Holy shit. I do have... As you can see... Oh, no. If I go like that, you can see it's... Uh, I can't do it on the screen here. But you got... this. Right. No, right there. Holy fuck. This reverse thing is fucking my head up. But I had the other box set too, so I can't. I, I needed this. I needed this. These are uh, the later films, um, the later trilogy from the seventies, which I won't pull out because whatever. But yeah, I'm looking forward to checking those out. That's going to be amazing too. So that is the Arrow stuff. Now I have a ridiculous stack of Screen Fact. This like there was about a year and a half there where Screen Factory was releasing a lot of shit. Like, a lot of releases I was not interested in. I started, like, not buying, like, all these fucking, you know, collector's editions and shit. And, but, man, they've been really stepping up their game, releasing a lot of 60s and 50s and 70s films. Since they got this Hammer, all the Hammer films shit, they've went berserk with the releases. And I got a huge fucking stack here. Um, happy to upgrade the brain. I do have the Region 2 DVD of this, but I love the brain. It's a cheese fest. But with a lot of social commentary, this movie is actually a little bit more um, smart than you would give it credit for. It's got a lot of social commentary. It, it's pretty, it's pretty blatant what it is, but it's still there. It's fun. The brain, great transfer on it. Yeah, just happy to see this on Blu-ray, man. That's really cool. Really cool. Uh, Man's Best Friend. Now, this is a '90s film that I had actually never seen before. I had the DVD in my cart forever and ever and ever, just never picked it up. And then it went out of print. <laughs> I was like, what? Fucking man's best friend went out of print. So I was happy to see that, uh, you know, Screen Factory released Blu ray. And I liked it, man. I liked it. Um, Lance Hendrickson in there, you know, who runs this facility. They did some testing on these animals and stuff. And this dog is like a hyper, it's like a hyper fucking dog <laughs> hybrid. Anyways, yeah. You guys pretty much know what the rest of that is. I actually liked it. I thought it was pretty good. Worth the buy. The Deadly Mantis. I haven't rewatched this Blu-ray, but or watched this Blu-ray yet, but I've seen the movie before. I love the Deadly Mantis. It's fun shit. Awesome. Awesome. See, this is the type of shit that's making me really excited that's coming out. 1957 Deadly Mantis. God, you can't go wrong, man. You can't go wrong. I haven't even opened this one up yet, but I believe this is the the sequel to She. The Vengeance of She. I've actually never seen this movie, so I'm pretty sure it's related to She. But yeah, so this one's from 1967. Yes, The Vengeance of She. Screen Factory killing it. Yes, I've seen this movie before. Uh, 1956, The Mole People. I haven't gone around 
to re-watching this movie. But yeah, the mole people. <laughs> Fucking so awesome. I can't believe all these older films that they're releasing. It's like amazing to me. This was uh, pretty interesting. The Body Snatcher with Boris Karloff. Uh, I'd seen this movie before. I think it, I have it on a Boris Karloff box set. I think I do. But I've seen it before. I liked it, man. Anything with Karloff, man, you gotta really check out. And of course, Bella Gosey's in the film too. So can't really go wrong with that, can ya? There it is. There it is. There it is. <laughs> oh, man. That probably sounded a lot worse than it actually was. Shit. All right. The Return of the Vampire. Another upgrade for myself. Love this movie uh, with Bella Gosi. This one came out in 1943. Good stuff. Really, really good stuff. I don't even know where to put the stuff now because I just... Ridiculous. At least I don't have to bring everything upstairs after I do this update. Because I, I always do that. I record all my shit downstairs and I have to bring it in boxes, you know. Um, the Devil's Own, also known as... If you go to buy this one, it is also known as The Witches. I really don't like that cover art, though. I do like original cover arts. The Devil's Own. Uh, it was pretty good. A little bit boring at times. Um, but... It was okay. It was okay. I'd never seen that one before. Uh, Scream for Help. This one was okay. I checked this one out. It's another one I hadn't seen uh, from 1984. It's not a bad thriller. I would say more of a thriller than anything, but uh, yeah, it actually wasn't too bad about this plot to kill. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Warning Sign. Upgraded my Anchor Bay DVD to the Blu-ray. I like this movie, man. I think it's great. So, warning sign. More of more of like a sci-fi kind of deal. Yeah. But it's got horror elements in there, for sure. This is awesome. This is the type of shit that I, I just can't even believe. Grave of the Vampire from 1972. Scream Factory. Yes. Thank you for this, man. I love this movie. This movie has one of the greatest... Fuck, my nose is itchy. Sorry, I got really bad allergies. Um has a really fantastic scene in a graveyard oh man it's just shot so well it's amazing i loved it grave of the vampire fun stuff amazing so hammer meets shaw brothers the legend of the seven golden vampires fuck yeah this movie was awesome i loved it it's everything you would want from a hammer meets shaw brothers film you know kung fu horror oh man really really good stuff highly recommend that good shit like, everybody wanted this on Blu-ray. So happy to upgrade my DVD. Superstition, one of my all-time favorite 80s slashers. Supernatural slashers. Kind of like a witch slasher. It's got great kills, great atmosphere, great setting. Yeah, Superstition. If you don't have this, run out and grab two copies. It's amazing. Another awesome one. This is another upgrade for me, but I absolutely love this movie. And that's Tarantula. This is a great giant killer spider film uh, from 1955. I, you know, actually my DVD of this, man, I think I have the Region 2 DVD. And it looks great. Like, that is just a phenomenal DVD transfer. So, I can't wait to see what this looks like. Um, it doesn't say new transfer. So, and that always, like, I don't know where they're getting these transfers from. But, but Tarantula, awesome. Good stuff. Another Anchor Bay DVD upgrade. And that's the Manitou. Man, I absolutely love this movie from 1978. Just a great, great, weird film. Um, yeah, man. Tony Curtis, Susan Strasberg. Yeah, this is good shit, man. Highly, highly recommend the Manitou. Awesome. Sorry, I'm not really going into much detail about these films. It's just, it's pretty obvious why I'm not. It's just a lot to get through. Holocaust 2000, also known as. If you go to buy this film, it'll be known as The Chosen. There we go. I like that. I like that cover. Like, that's actually pretty cool. But a movie with Holocaust in the title, I just have to I have to showcase. Kirk Douglas. Um, yeah, this, it's pretty good. It's actually pretty good. I enjoyed the film. You know, like, every time I watch, like, movies with Kirk Douglas, I cannot believe how much him and Michael are, like, identical. Like, Michael Douglas is, like, his dad to a T it's insane mannerisms voices everything um yeah directed by Alberto Martino I believe that he also did 
oh shit dude my brain is just not working and I even have other films I know we did Bloodlink from 82 um, music from Moni Morricone in this too so yeah good shit Brooke Adams in The Unborn finally got around to picking this up uh, I don't know what it is about this one but ever since it came out it was like in the 30s for price I don't know it was like the most ex uh, pricey screen factory of all time I swear <laughs> It was fun, a little bit cheesy, but it was okay. It's uh, from the 90s, 1991. I was watching, I, like, I had always thought I'd seen this film, but it turns out, as far as my memory can serve me correctly or not, I don't think I'd ever seen this before. It's weird. Usually from any movies from, like, the early 90s and shit, I definitely would have seen, but... Um, another upgrade, The Alligator People. Uh, I love this movie, man. What is this? 1959. Alligator People, man. See, that's what I love about the 50s, man. They had movies like Alligator People, Giant Spiders, and just that atomic age of horror, you know? Mutant shit. Love it. Good stuff. Uh, picked up Valentine. This is how old, this is how long I haven't done this update in, man, because this came out in February. Actually, I, I think I got this right after I did my update, my last one. Uh, Valentine, you know, it's, it's not the greatest slash in the world but i always seem to like this movie more every time i watch it i don't know why it's just kind of like it's got beautiful women in it it's got pretty decent kills you know it's paced pretty decently um yeah i think this one 2000 2000 slash year yeah another upgrade for myself i do have the snapper case dvd of this yeah fun i did do it i did i said i wasn't going to do it and i was like Fuck it. My DVD looks like shit. But I did it. I still haven't even opened it. <laughs> It'll probably take me a long time to, to re-watch this. But I've never really been the hugest fan of the craft. But I do I do like it. I don't love it. I don't like love it like some people. When we did our 96 show, this one actually didn't even make my top 10. So, But I know some people are probably like, that's fucking blasphemy. It's got Feruza Balk in it. It's okay. And last up, which is pretty anticlimactic, but uh, yeah, the Poison Ivy collection. Yes, I know. I don't know what... Sometimes... See, this is what happens. It's a box set, so it, it, it sucked me in. I was never even a big fan of the original Poison Ivy, and I'm still really not. I watched the rewatched the original one. It's okay with Drew Barrymore. Um, then I watched the second one with Alyssa Milano, and it's, it's worse than the first one. It's okay. Then I watched the third one uh, with... Jamie Presley, but she is so hot in it, man. And it's terrible. And then I had to stop. I haven't even watched the fourth one yet, which is uh, a TV film from 2008. The original three are all from the 90s, and all of a sudden this one randomly came out like 11 years later, from 97 to 2008. So I couldn't bring myself to watch the fourth one because it was just, it was very draining watching three or four of these. I will eventually get around to it, but I was honestly in like a 90s thriller mode there for a little bit i was you know not anymore <laughs> not anymore man not anymore i guess that's just what happens man that's what happens so and i think that's it for the update a buck eight a buck eight and that's probably what it's gonna be so i, I don't think i'm really even gonna edit this video at all i'm just gonna say fuck it just do it in one shot mm. that's some cold ass coffee right there so yeah, that is it. I got a huge ass mess to clean up here. Um, I do have some videos on the way. Guys, be on the lookout. I think my next one is going to be the don't video. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, yeah, that's it for the update, guys. Again, make sure you email Jeremy if you have any inquiries about getting shirts. I highly recommend getting one of these. This print is amazing. The shirt quality is awesome. They fit beautifully. I can't stress enough had how well these things turned out. It's awesome for, for very first printing to actually turn out this well. And so, yeah. Look at that shit, man. Look at that. It looks really, really damn good. So, very impressed with it. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for the update. Hope I didn't forget anything. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But uh, I'll check you guys later. And as usual, deuces!